there's a lot you can do in this town You set it up and turn it around We might have come from somewhere else But this is where we found ourselves Welcome to the local show People you work with, people you Welcome to another edition of The Local Show here in our summer series. Guys, thanks for joining us. I'm Eric Scarvin, your host. So excited to have back longtime friend. He was on the show about 14 years ago, you guys, in our 19 years of broadcasting. It's Troy Selby, owner and operator of Hi, Silver Eric. Peak Grill. Good to see you, buddy. <laughs> so owner, operator, did I get that right? And yep. chef, chef of Silver Peak Grill, formerly the 520 Grill. And we're going to talk about that. But I wanted to continue our pre-show conversation. You're getting into gravel biking, buddy. Yeah, sure. As a cyclist, that's yeah. like one of the most exciting new aspects of cycling in recent years is gravel riding. Can you tell us a little bit about your new passion? Well, it's just a nice in-between um, mountain biker at heart. And I had the old school road bike, and I find that to be a little more terrifying in my old age and flat <laughs> tires and, and wobbly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sort of a little bit burlier setup there. Yeah, a little burlier the setup. Bike. I'm more of a Clydesdale anyway, so having something <laughs> a little stout underneath me uh, <laughs> makes me feel better on the downhills, and I'm more apt to take it off off road and off road and jump off curbs and take the long way home kind of kind of aspect. Yeah, get on some dirt maybe. Yeah, and have you done some trail riding? Yeah, or some, some dirt some riding. Trail riding all down, up and down the Rio Grande along the the side trails there, and nice. the gravel ways down Valley and. Uh, I've taken all over more open space and up those trails behind Burling Game and Lenado at all back in there. I haven't made it that far yet. Uh, mountain bike season started a little earlier than I thought, so I ended up jumping on my mountain bike because I had a new mountain bike as well. So nice. I, uh, I was kind of torn between which one to ride some days. <laughs> These are the decisions we love, yeah, right? Gravel, so mountain, so, hike. Yeah, so I'm trying to get back into my fitness phase again, and uh, so hopefully I'll get back to being able to do two a days. Yeah, uh, some. Well, it's challenging because you run a, you run a, a very uh, popular and successful restaurant in town. You're a dad now. Remy's 10 years old. 10 years old now. And we just celebrated Father's Day, so yep. happy belated Father's yep, Day. Yeah, so we have all that going for us, and all that doesn't keep me busy. Yeah. Uh, which is How nice. is it being a dad? I love being a dad. It's probably the, it's the most rewarding thing I've done with my life. That's what, that's what guys say. You know, yeah. It's just... Uh, Talking uh, to Chris Klug, who also yeah. mentions Clydesdale, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. also the joy of being a dad. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, we're friends with his family lovely. as well. And uh, does Remy like to ride bikes too? Not at the same level that I do yet, but uh, he's a great little athlete, and yeah. he just got him a new mountain bike for his birthday. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, I haven't bought him a full suspension bike yet because he hasn't showed enough enthusiasm. Yeah. So uh, got but, a hard tail. Yeah. So he likes, but he likes to get around uh, and he likes to cruise around town and pull wheelies and jump off curbs and stuff so oh, fun he'll get there eventually yeah yeah he's still young kids hate going uphill and your wife is may einen selby yep yep folks know around town yep the uh mountain mayhem the writer of and uh we call her mrs fun she's in uh, and head of everything fun in uh at the little nell i love it um greater skiko at times too but oh uh, yeah she's she stays very busy very busy Okay. Well, let's go into a little bit of the history. We're going to take a break in a couple minutes, but just the evolution. We're not going to go back to the beginning of 520 Grill, but you yeah. guys started that about 14, 15 years ago. Yeah, I'm in ago. my 14th year of business right now. And then when did it transition? When and why did it transition to Silver Peak Grill? Well, Silver Peak, the marijuana dispensary, came under new ownership. Um, and I liked the new owner. He had some really great ideas and some enthusiasm and, uh, about the future of the of the property and the building and the brand and he felt a little buried in the back and I yeah. uh, wanted it to kind of feel all f feel and look the same and I was kind of getting a little as time progressed I was kind of getting a little more Johnny McGuire's and a little less a little less uh, warm stuff for my hike uh, a little uh, <laughs> <laughs> a little um, less uh, sophisticated let's say okay and so he wanted to kind of a uh, yeah offered uh, offered me to some money and some uh, to change my name and pay for a remodel and do some do some uh, improvements to the greater greater appearance of the building and all that stuff so which was we were in a time of where it kind of needed it and uh, this happened a little bit pre-covid and then all of a sudden covid hit and 
we were shut down and uh, and then we, we were able to reopen again we needed to have more spread out seating and this that and I'd had family style seating benches benches all the way around really tight community communal seating so um, we said it offered to pay for a remodel all new tables and chairs and all that stuff nice. like, well that's uh, good timing and he had some yeah. extra space to to let me use at the time uh, across the hall so I was able to spread out my seating and accommodate those the new rules and regulations of being open closed open closed just uh, dis social distancing and all that kind of stuff um, so that was good timing on that we had hoped to do some other s collaborative stuff together but it didn't really quite work out and turns out the city and maybe the general public wasn't quite ready for marijuana consumption and food and beverage and right and that kind and we'll of talk thing. a little bit more about that because that that question begs you know yeah, yeah, a, yeah. of the relationship between yeah. the cannabis dispensary and the restaurant but we're gonna take a quick break buddy okay rehydrate All right. for some heavy conversation mm -hmm. we'll be doing some talking intervals and endurance conversation <laughs> as, Man. as best cyclists <laughs> Sprint, sprints today huh? <laughs> i gotta get that in there <laughs> don't mean to shock you <laughs> talking about oh never mind <laughs> shock absorbers on the bikes anyway we do want to thank our summer underwriters for making shows like this possible hope you got a chance to see our season premiere with hippie chick and author jill Sheely. We do want to thank, on that note, our summer underwriters, Aspen Square, Haiti Children, Klug Properties, Pick and Connie Solid Waste Center, Susie's Consignment Aspen, Silver Peak Grill, Sundog Athletics, and our new mm -hmm. exclusive presenting sponsor, the Wheeler Opera House. We're going to go to our only break of the show, guys. We'll be back in just over two minutes with Troy Selby and how do you run a local business and a restaurant in Aspen, Colorado successfully and so much more. Don't go away. At the Wheeler Opera House, we set the stage for connections that create memories for our audiences, artists, and greater Aspen community. At the Wheeler Opera House, all are welcome. You're welcome to be a part of history. I'm so passionate about this community. I absolutely love living here and raising my family here. It gives me a lot of pride to share this with my friends and my clients and help them achieve their, their dreams of owning an Aspen snowmass and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. Join the string beans in helping reduce food waste in our community. Plan menus carefully and only buy what you need. Collect unused scraps for compost. Ask for smaller portions in restaurants. Take home leftovers to eat later. Donate unopened food to our food bank. Let's work in concert to reduce food waste. Providing exceptional service for over 50 years, Aspen Square features studio and larger condominiums for nightly rental with an ideal downtown Aspen location. They offer fully equipped kitchens, wood-burning fireplaces, and private balconies with full hotel-style services and gracious hospitality. Aspen Square is proud to support The Local Show. Chef owned and operated and supported by a hardworking team behind the line, Silver Peak Grill is passionate about their food, service, and delivering quality. Expect quick serve, casual dining, in a clean, bright atmosphere with an outdoor patio with shade in the summer. Sundog Athletics, Aspen's Adventure Sports School, is your opportunity to experience Aspen's most amazing adventure locations and gain new skills to increase your safety, performance, and enjoyment while mountain biking, road biking, hiking, and paddling on Aspen's exclusive canoeing adventure. Welcome to the local show. People you work with, people you know. We're back here on the local show, guys. Thanks for sticking with us. We have restaurateur, owner, operator, and chef, Troy Selby in the house. And Troy, the rumors of Aspen's Quality affordable dining have been <laughs> demise have been greatly exaggerated because you guys are proving it every day. 
And what's it like just running the business day to day and having people come in and kind of just, I guess, the social aspect? I'd imagine you really enjoy that. And that's, that's part of the reason I designed the restaurant the way we did. It was, you know, 14 years ago, I had a vision of it as affordable, affordable dining, quick serve, kind of modern spin. There, Chipotle's and Five Guys and other places were coming around that uh, smash burger. But yep. it was still kind of on the fast food side. It's still on the not as healthy side. So I kind of wanted this health, fresh, fast, healthy cuisine, and it has a, it's still evolving into that in that direction, which is a great thing. And, uh, and I enjoy the daily I enjoy the daily operations of it. Besides the less glamorous stuff that my wife always says she catches me doing, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but I enjoy talking. Well, there's the good, the bad, the ugly in yeah. every business, right? Yeah, you got to grind sometimes. Yeah, but I enjoy talking to the people, and I yeah. and that's the beauty of it of the the open kitchen and order at the counter, and we get we get to meet and know all our customers, and that's yeah. part of the joy of it is the re the return return customers year after year, day after day. And I, agree. I spent a lot of years as a chef in a kitchen in a basement behind three walls and never interacted with, the, only interacted with the wait servers and whatnot. And he had this, you know, everybody was a pain in the butt and we don't like this, we don't like that. And yeah. But now I know the people and I'm like, oh, they're not a pain in the butt, that's Fred. He doesn't like, he doesn't like tomatoes, no big deal. You know, though, right. that's, that's John, he's gluten free, that's Tom. He, he like he gets a kale salad. You know? It's the relationship. It's the relationship, and yeah. I know I might not know their name, but I know what they eat. I know what they're allergic to. I know what they don't like. I know that he really is celiac. That person just doesn't like bread. This person, you know, <laughs> <laughs> right, they're not necessarily pains in the butt. So they, no. they have like legitimate concerns and needs. <laughs> yeah. They might be allergic to stuff. Yeah, and we're here. So that's all cool. And um, my philosophy, and I've taught my staff the same philosophy, is that if you can read it on my menu board. Any ingredient, any anything you want, anything you see, there's a pretty good chance we can make it for you. There you go. And then there's other times when people come in and want something that I'm like, there is absolutely nothing on this menu that resembles <laughs> any of those things that you said. So right. maybe you should go to Spring Cafe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing as we have really none of those ingredients, <laughs> like uh, Egg Foo Young isn't uh, even close to on the menu. Which is, by the way, the my favorite off the menu Chinese yeah. is Egg Foo Young. Egg Foo Young. Like, yeah, we can make that for you. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about the menu because also, you yeah. know, in addition to the name change and the yeah. evolution of the interior redesign the additional space i love it love the peter tosh mural by the way my mom was a very talented muralist in her oh, time fun fun there was a fun spot really quick grant's big dog in milwaukee she did yeah. like a 40 foot long hot dog scene people yeah. eating hot dogs at Summerfest music so i totally love that um let's talk about the menu because um, you guys are known for these are kind of yeah. signature dishes let's yeah. talk about some of those you know we've, we've evolved a lot over the years i started out with a very Started out very small salads, salads, burgers, and tacos, and, and over the years it's evolved to to eggs and eggs and protein bowls and salads and more salads and different quality of ingredients and bison burgers and yeah. the things we just have on the menu for ever. But the menu's kind of always evolved from the food I like to eat as a chef, the stuff that we, me and my staff members, uh, would eat eat as family meals and right think, you know all those we'd be in a fancy french restaurant or italian restaurant and he gets tired of the food or whatever and you know the dishwasher one night is like i'm gonna make tongue tacos or i'm gonna make <laughs> i'm gonna make enchiladas or i'm gonna make these rolladillos or whatever it was and uh, we want to have fried chicken sandwiches today or so my menu is all constantly evolved from the things that i like to eat or the things that my friends suggest that they want to eat and so we run specials for a couple of years in a row of just stuff and try things out and the ones that stick we put on the menu. What are some of like what are your podium? Like what would be on the podium like for lunch? So Troy, one of my favorites is a steak quesadilla. Yeah, um, we would that uh, make the podium of like you know, the most popular? Our steak in general would make the podium. It's one of the things I over the years I keep changing it and and and, and whatnot. And different want, forms, yeah. Different forms from what what sell what sells good or what buys well. Uh, from flap steak to flank steak to skirt steak, okay. now on to these sirloin center heart cuts because the value is good. You know, it's like an eight dollar a pound steak. 
that we can chop up and grill for quesadillas and tacos and salads and Super tasty. all that kind of stuff. It has a nice, nice kind of New York steak kind of taste to it. Um, so I really like that. Uh, the protein bowls? Those protein things look bowls. like they would be popular. Uh, we got one called the Pandora Bowl. Yeah. Nice. We, we did a stint <laughs> with a, um, a pop-up breakfast place with a friend of mine, Greg Topper, uh, pre-COVID. Yeah, I remember that. And so th- five or th- three to five of his things from his menu made the cut and, and stuck on the menu are now uh, today. So we have a Pandora, and they were named after ski runs. Okay. And so we had a Pandora Bowl. No Highland Bowl? No. <laughs> Pandora Bowl. We had a Seabird Rice Bowl. Okay. Uh, we had a Zog Egg Sandwich. Those are the three nice. that stayed on the menu. Nice. And we had a couple, and then Rayburn uh, we had as well, which was a, a sandwich that I turned into a burger with the toppings that he had. The Rayburn. Yeah. And so we have all these, at, at one point we had all the dumps and all these other names and stuff from Ski Mountain. So just kind of <laughs> keep the, the Ski Bum legend alive, you know, and keep... A little a little shout out to the Aspen Mountain, which we love uh, being across the street from, of course. So where do you see kind of the evolution going, like with both the menu and the business? Um, you know, like I said, I'm kind of on a little bit of a health kick again, trying to get back to fitness and stuff. So, you know, I just recently decided to take canola oil out of my menu and um, use olive oil on all my dressings and sauces and marinades and, and nice. that kind of thing. Uh, switch my fr- fryer from a canola oil to a... Uh, a rice bran oil, okay, because um, it's a uh, the correct fats we need to eat and and no no GMO and trying to get away from that stuff. Yeah. Um, so cleaner, healthier. Trying to get cleaner and healthier and still keep that price point low, uh, or lower than the other guys. What would be some tips like um, not only for like starting a business, but in the restaurant industry, which is really special. You know, I mean. It has some a lot of nuances. I was a hotel restaurant guy by yeah. education. I know things like spoilage and food waste, and you know problems with ordering and employees and employee, you know, drug and alcohol addiction <laughs> is an inherent part of the industry. Um, I guess, um, you know, what would be some tips for an aspiring entrepreneur, um, and including in the restaurant, you know, industry. So say someone's thinking of starting a restaurant or a grab and go or something like that. Not that you want maybe additional competition. No, I know, of course. But just some tips, like things that have helped you the most. You know, passion helps. Passion and compassion. Yeah. Um, You know, got to be compassionate for your employees and your customers. Um, Employees are are your your gold. You know, can't do it without good employees, and you have to be nice to your employees. You have to be. Uh, understanding that they have families and they have lives and they have they're gonna get sick they're gonna get tired they're gonna have they're gonna have medical problems they're gonna uh, all these things are gonna happen and you have to adjust and you have to uh, for me I have to be willing to work days many days in a row and uh, to jump in jump in and be able to work wear all the hats that I do and that kind of stuff but I also expect the same of my employees that that they have, that they need to help each other and, and work together, and and there'll be times when I'm sick or I can't work or I need a surgery or an operation, and they're gonna have to step in for me too and that kind of stuff. So right, and that real team, yeah, that real team work. You know, that's what, and being compassionate and taking yeah. care of them. And so that's what you know. That's why I'm still here after COVID is because I I, was, I had to take care of my employees. They were like they were like family. I couldn't just say oh. That's it. You're, you're out of a job. You're a, had to had to pay them all through COVID as if they were still working full time, even though we were open and closed and all that kind of stuff. And they, if their housing got sold out from underneath them, I had to be like, well, here it happened to two of my employees. Their housing got sold out from underneath them. I was like, they had to find new places to live. Jeez. I'm like, well, here's first, last, and security. Uh, good luck, you know. Wow. <laughs> and like, yeah, like real world issues, real and, world and issues challenges, that, challenges. That, you, that you step up and help them with. Yeah, and have to talk help about them. the passion part because you know we talk, we we kind of know that passion's important, but can you talk more in the in the importance of passion in running a business? Yeah, um, like I said, you, you have to. It's to be a restaurateur, you have to you have to love it. I mean, you really have to love it. You have to. I mean, I. 
I tried to get out of it a few times. It's kind of like the mafia, and I just, I just keep, <laughs> just keeps bringing me back in. You know, like, all right, keeps making the offer you can't refuse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, cause you love yeah. it. I love it, and I know, and it that's why I you back. started my own place uh, 14 years ago because I, that's all I ever really wanted to yeah. be my own boss and to have, and those are the the joys of it, having being your own boss and making your own hours and that kind of thing, and being open on the days you want to, or being closed for Christmas, or um, you have to make it work for you. Um, being successful is is a bo- is a bonus. I mean, it's not it's not a guarantee, and it yeah. doesn't come without a lot of hard work and a lot of time. Um, Boom. And then the time you put in, the more you put in, the more you get out. And but there's, there's you know, we live in a resort town. We live it's the ups and downs where the challenges are coming at you from all different directions, from forest fires to the airport and highway closures, the <laughs> housing <laughs> crisis, yeah, the housing and crisis, traffic uh, issues, and bad snow years. We're counting on a good winter season. You know, you have a bad snow year. You have a bad, you know. So there's lots of challenges, and you just have to, you have to adapt. You constantly have to adapt and be willing to, willing to rethink your game and, and, you know, buy, buy, stuff cheap when you can, but not. Of poor quality and you know looking and for value, looking for value when you're purchasing, and, when you're purchasing and the hard work value. part. There's no way around that. There's no way right? around it. And I think that's a stumbling block for yeah. people who don't really have that work ethic. You got to say the only way to only way to save money or or make more money sometimes is for you to do more. You're like okay, well, and then uh, but now we're at a different era where it, the costs are higher than ever before. Um, Minimum wage and that kind of stuff is higher than ever before. I don't have like wait staff. We have everybody's equal. We are all we're all on the payroll. They're all on the payroll, and we do fight for some tips and that kind of stuff. But tips are tips aren't what they used to be in this modern era because we're in a almost cashless society. Right, right, <laughs> which makes it probably more challenging. More challenging. The it's cash all, tips. The cash tips is all taxes. Yeah. You know, so everything's on credit cards and debit cards and all computerized so, so uh, <laughs> heads up to viewers yeah, yeah. Th- those are always appreciated yeah cash uh, tips are cash appreciated. is still king <laughs> still <laughs> that king. hasn't I, changed i know i used to have signs all the restaurant cash is king but i thought so let's go back to the what Sorry. we touched on earlier the cannabis aspect because you know would it be possible even if you wanted to to have a cannabis infused menu or just some a few items on the menu or is our city not quite ready for that either I think it comes down to the city and government and municipality not really being ready for that yeah. sort of stuff yet. Um, and I don't know if the general public is either. Um, even though marijuana is out there and in the forefront and pretty prevalent in our society. Pretty popular, too. Popular. People yeah. are still kind of apprehensive about openly being potheads, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's still a stigma in a lot yeah, of parts of the country. Yeah, it's not yeah. completely and, accepted. Uh, or, or your family, perhaps, or your yeah. parents, or your grandparents, or your children. And, and it wouldn't be for the kids. Like, yeah. you kind of block out the family yeah. aspect when you do that, yeah, right? Yeah, and I didn't want to lose... And we had some ideas about doing some stuff collaboratively. We, we we're going to do a marijuana beverage consumption lounge. Um, and the, that was part of the the branding and the rebrand merger we're going to do that stuff and as we got closer to um, permitting and papers and uh, dealing with the city the city said yeah come back and see us in five years so <laughs> we were like put that one in the back burner. yeah so I was like <laughs> the okay back of the cooler and like that because we'll forget about that for a while and so I've kind of forgotten about it and then as yeah. time passed I really just really don't want to lose my family friendly vibe that we do have yeah. down there even though there's a marijuana store just there in the back of the building it's it's still a very it's still on the discreet side yeah you know it's not people don't people still walk down the stairs and it's like don't know where it is or can't find it you know <laughs> and you're like so you guys are like back there back when, yeah. when they look like they're kind of in yeah. the deer in the headlamp uh, yeah like keep going then, you're almost there <laughs> you know, just keep going yeah. so it does seem complimentary though when you think about no, getting the munchies yeah, you know it's a natural and, that way you know there's our there's our seasoned veterans that uh, <laughs> i see them uh, they call on the phone and then i see them walk by 
Maybe no. <laughs> they can they can put one and two. one and one together. Yeah, you know? They can put two they're and two they're together. They're getting food. They're getting something else they might need, and they're leaving. <laughs> You know, good, which is great. good way to consolidate your errands all in one spot. Yeah, you know? <laughs> it's convenient. Um, I and I think it's uh, all just fine and dandy. Yeah. Some people are still confused by it and the labeling and that kind of stuff. We got to wrap the show, buddy. We're out of time, right. but I do have some cookies I baked for you. Oh, cookies! I knew that was probably at least fifty percent of the reason you were showing up. Today. <laughs> Did you have fun on the show today, buddy? Always. Thanks Always for fun being to talk here. with you. Thanks yeah. for being here. Thanks for what you do for our community. Yeah. And also thank you for supporting The Local Show. For sure. And thank you guys for watching this week on The Local Show. <laughs> At the Wheeler Opera House, we set the stage for connections that create memories for our audiences, artists, and greater Aspen community. At the Wheeler Opera House, all are welcome. You're welcome to be a part of history. I'm so passionate about this community. I absolutely love living here and raising my family here. It gives me a lot of pride to share this with my friends and my clients and help them achieve their, their dreams of owning an Aspen Snowmass and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. Want to live like a local? Help us reduce food waste, a major contributor to climate change. You can help in three simple ways. Plan menus carefully and only buy what you need. Collect unused scraps for compost. Buy ugly fruits and vegetables. Reduce, Reduce food, food waste. waste. Live, Live like, like a, a local. local. Sundog Athletics Aspen's Adventure Sports School is your opportunity to experience Aspen's most amazing adventure locations and gain new skills to increase your safety, performance, and enjoyment while mountain biking, road biking, hiking, and paddling on Aspen's exclusive canoeing adventure. Welcome to the local show. People you work with, 